Good morning and welcome to A Word for Wednesday, for Wednesday the 10th of March. I hope you are well and I thank you for joining me here in St Mark's and from wherever you are to worship today in the middle of our week. Let us come to God, let us pray. Lord of all, we come to you, making space in the middle of our day, in the middle of our week, to be still and know that you are God, to listen to your still small voice in the peace and calm of this moment. Living God, in this season of Lent, we come to you, seeking your presence, offering our worship, wanting to know you better. Lord of all, forgive us that we make time for you so rarely, believing ourselves to be too busy for you. Forgive us that we fill our lives with activity, rushing around doing this and that, yet neglecting the most important part. Forgive us that we ask you to speak but fail to hear your voice because we forget to go on listening. Forgive us that we deny ourselves the peace of your presence because we claim independence or willfully disobey. Loving God, accept us now despite our many failings. Forgive us for forgetting you. Renew us through your spirit. Feed us the bread of life. Help us to recognise that Christ is with us now as we gather in his name. Teach us that you are with us always, speaking, encouraging, guiding, nourishing, waiting and wanting to touch our lives with your grace. Open our hearts and our minds to you now, we pray. Amen. Last week's meeting of the Ladies' Bible Study Group was the last in the current series on hope. We've been looking at different aspects of hope relating to our Christian faith. And our final study was looking at when all things become new, based on Revelation chapter 21, where John is writing of his vision of what lies ahead. He wrote, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, the first heaven and the first earth disappeared and the sea vanished. And a little bit later, a voice speaks. Now God's home is with human beings. He will live with them and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and they shall be his people. He will wipe away all tears from their eyes. There will be no more death, no more grief and crying or pain. Whilst God being with the people and them being his people resonates with what I've been speaking about the last couple of Sundays, that isn't what I want to think about today. As part of the Bible study, we had a conversation about if God could wipe away our tears right now, what would be the problems we would want him to erase? Understandably, we raised COVID, separation, isolation, grief, loss, bereavement, and many more, including poverty. Periodically, our TV screens fill with pictures of starving children, in threadbare or almost no clothing, with distended bellies, protruding bones, and stick-like limbs. We find it uncomfortable, unpleasant, even mildly distressing, and we might feel inclined to give money or send a small donation to salve our conscience. Most of us have no notion of what it means to be truly hungry. We satisfy our hunger with all types of food, healthy and not, convenience and those carefully prepared. We throw away phrases like, I'm famished or I'm starving, only a few hours after a meal without understanding what they really mean. And if we have distended stomachs, it's usually through overeating, not starvation. So in the context of high levels of world poverty, made worse by COVID-19, 
it can be difficult to hear Jesus' words from John chapter 6. When the people found Jesus on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Teacher, when did you get here? Jesus answered, I'm telling you the truth. You're looking for me because you ate the bread and had all you wanted, not because you understood my miracles. Do not work for food that goes bad. Instead, work for the food that lasts for eternal life. This is the food which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has put his mark of approval on him. So they asked him, what can we do in order to do what God wants us to do? Jesus answered, what God wants you to do is believe in the one he sent. They replied, what miracle will you perform so that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, just as scripture says. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. I'm telling you the truth, Jesus said. What Moses gave you was not bread from heaven. It is my Father who gives you real bread from heaven. For the bread that God gives is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they asked him, give us this bread always. I am the bread of life, Jesus told them. He who comes to me will never be hungry. He who believes in me will never be thirsty. Amen, and may God add his blessing to this reading of his holy word. I am the bread of life. No one who comes to me will ever be hungry again. We know many are hungry today. We know that in parts of the world, many Christians are short of food despite their faith in Jesus. So when Jesus spoke these words, shortly after he'd fed 5,000 people with bread and fish, he certainly wasn't meaning that he would do, go on doing so, that hunger would become a thing of the past. So we need to go deeper to analyze what Jesus is really saying to us. Now we know that bread sustains life. It's one of the basic foodstuffs eaten the world over, although in different forms in different places. Baguettes in France, pretzels or rye bread in Germany, soda bread in Ireland, chapati or naan in India, and many, many more regional variations. But Jesus isn't really talking about bread. He's not talking about physical hunger, but something more than that, more than the physical practicalities of life. The real life that he's talking about is the new relationship with God, the relationship of love and trust and obedience of which we've been learning about as we learn more about Jesus. Jesus is the source of that life, that relationship. Without it, we might exist, but true life is only known through Jesus. Spiritual hunger is something known to many. The desperate searching for something to fulfill. Annoying in our spirit that dreams of something more than the life that currently holds. That causes people to seek out ways of satisfying that longing with candles and tarot cards, mystics and new age spirituality, with thrill seeking and travel, with excesses of alcohol, drugs and sex. People are searching without knowing what they're looking for. But this hunger of the human heart is ended when we know Jesus and through him know God. We may still seek to know him better, but the deep emptiness is gone. We receive the bread of life, and our hearts receive what they have been searching for. Life ceases to be only an existence and becomes a life filled with meaning and God's peace. But as I said earlier, we can fill our bodies with healthy and unhealthy food. And so too our spirits. 
Spiritual junk food is just as much a reality as Big Macs and KFC. And spending time and energy on activities that do not have eternal value dulls our spiritual appetite for God's word. The psalmist writes of hungering for God's word. But in Psalm 119, verse 103, he goes further. How sweet are your words to my taste. They are sweeter than honey. Can we say the same? Sometimes we read the Bible out of obligation. We think we should. We know it's good for us, but it doesn't taste good. But sometimes we read and it is spiritually satisfying. We receive spiritual food and we're nourished by it. And sometimes, like the psalmist, we read and it tastes good, like the most delectable dessert off the sweet trolley. And we're not limited to only reading the Bible. Spiritual nourishment comes in many forms, from churches, online at present, from televisions, radio and podcasts, from books about the Bible and about the Christian faith. Are the books about the lives of those who've walked this Christian way before us? From sharing our faith stories with others and sharing our struggles too. And prayer, alone or in a group. And through music, singing is something we are missing in our worship. But music still has a key role to play in feeding our spiritual lives. All these nourish our souls and feed us the bread of life of which Jesus speaks. And as we are nourished, we receive his gift of eternal life. So let us open our hearts and minds and accept the bread of life that Jesus offers, not just once or twice, but on a daily basis, as we pray, give us this day our daily bread. May we receive both actual bread and the spiritual nourishment we need. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, living God, you came into our world through Christ Jesus to help, to heal, to save, to nourish. So now we pray for those in any kind of need. Reach out to them in your love. Gracious God, lover of the poor, the weak, the vulnerable, we pray for those who are sick and suffering, the poor and the hungry, the oppressed and the exploited, the aged and infirm, the frightened and the anxious, the sorrowful and the bereaved, the helpless and the hopeless. Reach out to them in your love. Jesus, bread of life, there is so much need here in Paisley across Scotland and all the way around the world. So many people crying out for help, seeking food and purpose and meaning in their lives. Reach out to them with your love. Lord God, show us where we can respond. Give us the means and the will and the commitment and the love to reach out in the name of Jesus offering something of ourselves to others, even as he offered himself to us. We pray for our politicians at government and local level, for those who serve as civil servants or in local authority positions. We ask for wisdom, insight, patience, dedication, integrity and open-mindedness that each of them may be equipped to honour the trust placed in them and to carry out their role for the good of all. Reach out to them in your love. We pray for the leaders in other countries, both large and small, superpowers and tiny states, shaping the lives of millions. Grant them guidance and the gifts to govern well, 
that they may work for the good of all people and strive to promote justice, freedom of speech and opportunity, food for all, freedom from oppression and the right to an education. Reach out to them in your love. And in the week of International Women's Day, we give thanks for the women across the world who've been making an impact during a very difficult year. For the scientists, the advisors, the doctors, the nurses, the carers, and all the women who've played a role in fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray for all women around the world who are leading, serving, and blessing their communities. But we also know that many women are downtrodden, discriminated against and dismissed. So we pray for an end to gender inequality, for the eradication of female genital mutilation, for communities everywhere to address power imbalances and bring about lasting change. Gracious God, strengthen all who struggle while we wait for a time when your justice and peace will reign, when all will be nourished and love will prevail. Reach out to all people in your love. Our prayers we offer through Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning. I hope to see you again on Sunday.